I recently posted about how important it is for our kids to have a felt sense that feeling anger is an okay and even healthy human emotion. Many of us grew up in homes where it wasn't safe or okay to feel anger. We were supposed to shut it down and hide it and bury it and not ever feel it or express it. Anger is a healthy human emotion that's really appropriate in lots of circumstances. We want our kids to know it's okay to feel angry, but they actually are also responsible for their behavior. But they can't get to that point before they're ready developmentally. A lot of kids, when they're in really um, volatile states where they have a lot of anger, can be physically violent or verbally aggressive. Um, And this is not because the child is necessarily choosing to do that. Usually they're not. Usually it's because stress hormones are flooding their bodies. They are dysregulated. And what they need from us in that moment is to co-regulate, calm them down, keep our bodies safe so that they are not hurting us, of course. Um, But really to say, oh, you're so angry. I'm right here with you while you're angry. And, And maybe even ask, what do you need? How can I help? Or even just say, oh, you've got such big emotions. You're just really, really mad right now. I see that. I see that. Um, And we're helping them keep their body safe, keep our body safe, keep other bodies safe, not destroy property, right? So we really want to help provide parameters that allow them to not do damage while they're in that state. As development unfolds and as the architecture of their brain develops and they have better ability to pause before action, to rein in an impulse, to downregulate big emotions, then we're better able to have conversations with them about what can you do instead. So here's the thing. I had a mom who responded to my post saying that why should I accept my child's angry, violent outbursts um, when when society won't? Why should I do that? And I'm not at all saying you should accept your child's angry, violent outbursts. I'm saying that it is our job to cultivate our child's ability to regulate emotions as development unfolds. And that takes many years. So when our children are angry and reactive and even violent, we want to protect ourselves, protect them, protect the environment and people in the environment, give them the support to move back to a more regulated state. And then when they're back in this more regulated state, we can have conversation with them. It's okay to be angry, but it is not okay to hurt somebody. So what can you do next time when you're that angry and you have that big of feelings, because everybody feels angry sometimes. That's part of all of the feelings that we have. But what could you do next time so that you make sure that you're keeping everybody safe? And it might be jumping up and down to let some of the energy out. It might be going outside. It might be taking some deep breaths. It might be yelling into a pillow. There might be lots of kinds of things that can help the child get the energy out without hurting others. Now, if you are a parent who has an angry child who is angry a lot of the time, who has a disproportionate amount of anger in response to small little transitions or moments that is kind of, ex, you know, excessive for what you would expect at their age. Um, if you have a child who is um, violent and it's, it's frequent, then I would say to you, please go seek out some support. Um, I, one resource you can have immediately is Ross Green's book, Raising Good Humans, uh, where he really talks about kids who have really explosive, um, demonstrations and manifestations of the, those states of anger or dysregulation. And he's got some really good concrete things in there. So I would check out Ross Green's book, Raising Good Humans. Um, his previous book was called um, The Explosive Child. Um, and so this is kind of the same content, but more updated. Um, so I really like that as a resource for you. Um, and what I would say to you too, is that if you feel like your child's anger and their violence is excessive, talk to your child's pediatrician talk to a clinical psychologist or a pediatric and adolescent psychotherapist, Um, talk to a developmental pediatrician. We want to make sure that there's not something that's getting in the way of your child's development unfolding. Um, There might be a sensory sensory processing challenge. There might be um, something else going on developmentally or even medically. There might even be a sleep disorder, et cetera. Um, but then it's really important that we seek out help and the earlier the intervention, the better. So if you are concerned about your child's anger and violence, get some help and support. If you 
are just frustrated by it or it's hard, just know that development continues to unfold. And what I want to encourage you to do is make sure you're giving your child signals that communicate to them that it's okay and even healthy and important at times to feel anger and they are still responsible for handling their anger in ways that are not harmful and that are still respecting the environment, themselves, and other people. And you may need to do a lot of coaching around that and you're gonna need to wait for development to unfold. But it's really important our kids are given the permission to feel the whole range of healthy human emotion, even anger.